Uh, what's your assessment of uh, Israel using depleted uranium uh, in its weapons? Isn't that against human rights? Well, as an ex-Marine who, who served in the first Gulf War, I myself know the effects of depleted uranium because uh, of the effect it's had on uh, veterans from that war. And it shows how little regard our own nations have for, for their own so-called heroes. And as far as I'm concerned, having been to Iraq since that time and having vidi visited uh, Basra, the children's hospital, where unprecedented levels of uh, child leukemia have occurred and birth defects, where they hold photo album after photo album of these children that don't even look human, I think it's safe to say that not only is it a violation of human rights, but clear-cut cu clear crime against humanity. And uh, any nation that's involved in that, with the U.S. being the leading nation using that weapon, should be charged as such. And uh, the effects of this are going to uh, be occurring over generations, not just over the next uh, days and weeks. As you said, it's generation by generation the effects of depleted uranium. Uh, I mean, the U.S. used it in Iraq. You were in Iraq, as you said. Uh, what, what kind of, uh, is this a kind of strategy that's being used? You know, I, I think the only way to try and understand this world in, 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 in reality is to understand it from the view of insanity. Uh, the only way that you could possibly understand how these decisions are made is through the eyes of, of a mad person. Uh, the people who are conducting these policies clearly ignore all, uh, all humanity, all, all, all cause, all, all reason for, uh, for uh, concern for human beings. And, and the, the policies, it seems to me, are really intended to create havoc and to foster a war of, uh, of, of civilizations. Uh, and it, it only makes sense in that context. So using white phosphorus or using depleted uranium, will enrage the people, will eventually uh, cause for the kind of retaliation that will justify Israel's continuing uh, crimes against humanity. And this vicious circle, which is so manipulative, which of course Israel favors because they are the ones that have nuclear weapons, they are the ones that have the F-16s, they are the ones that have the so-called smart bombs. They can always win in any kind of conventional war, so they're happy to create the kind of hatred and bitterness that will result in the excuse for their policies and the money that they're spending on the military which could be used to the benefit of the people of Israel or in the case of the United States to the benefit of the people who don't have health care instead the people are being duped and uh, fooled into believing that somehow this benefits them when in fact it's creating nothing but the bitterness and hatred that justifies the military industrial complex that is uh, completely insane all right I'd like to switch now to Damascus uh... Uh, we have a political uh, analyst called Ismail Yassin from the University of Damascus. And many thanks for joining us, sir. Uh, why do you think uh, such countries that use depleted uranium against civilians are not held accountable? Well, I think, as our, my colleague said in, in London, this, this uh, action by Israel is against humanity, is against international law, but look, just we have to look at the records of Israel. Israel doesn't concern itself about uh, the international law, about the humanity, because its existence in essential or essentially uh, has been rooted in the land of Palestine by force and by the Western sides. And Israel denied a lot of uh, international resolutions that has been issued by the Security Council, but Israel is blindly supported by the United States of America and by some Western allies that they support its policy against the innocent civilians in Gaza Strip. So we will not expect from the State of Israel any kind of respect to the international laws as well as to the sense of humanity or to, this, uh, to, to the life of the human uh, dignity. So uh, I think this is, uh, this is about 60 years now of existent Israel. Israel is practicing, for example, uh, it's a, a kind of uh, dehumanized, dehumanized uh, policy ac according to those people uh, under its occupation, whether in uh, West Bank or in Gaza Strip. Well, how effective do you think the United Nations is in this regard? A 
again, I, excuse yes, me. Yes, and how I, effective I, do you, yes, uh, Mr. Mr. Ismail Yassin, how effective do you think the United Nations is in this regard? United Nations. Well, I think United Nations is not, it is United States, not United Nations. I think nobody, I, I just now, as uh, we are con concerned in the Arab world, in the Islamic world, the United Nations has been kidnapped by the hands of the United States and the American administration. And uh, today, just as uh, we have seen, in, uh, just uh, we're watching the news that American uh, representative in, in the United Nations and the Security Council has been informed by its uh, administration that uh, it will uh, deny and refuse any kind of resolution which will be issued by the Security Council or which has been also issued by uh, the, uh, the Arab delegate uh, in the Security Council by the Libyan representative. So we will not believe, we will not uh, witness or not expect any kind of initiative from the United Nations. So uh, we, uh, the Arab world, we have to to depend our, uh, on our own selves, as well as we have also just uh, to depend on the Islamic world and on the other entire world that they love uh, humanity, they love, for example, dignity, and they protect the uh, human life, as now what's happening, this uh, massive attack against the civilian uh, of Gaza Strip. All right, uh, Mr. Uh, Kathy from uh, London, uh, it's called the United Nations, but many say it's uh, the disunited nations. Well, why do you think it's not so affected? What's blocking it? Well, it's clear that the uh, five nations with veto powers, this must be abolished. Uh, I mean, it's completely absurd. How many vetoed resolutions are resolutions that never even become resolutions because the U.S. is blocking it case uh, in point what's happening right now. There's not even a resolution that needs to be vetoed because the U.S. won't even allow it to go to the table. Uh, how many times does the world have to witness this before we realize that that system uh, can be no more? The UN is uh, a central part of the uh, conflict in the first place. Before the UN, the British sat by while the Zionists came in and ethnically cleansed Palestinian land. Uh, while they uh, left, the UN stepped in. The partition plan was unfair from the beginning. So at the very beginning of the UN, it served the uh, Zionist agenda very well. And since that time has dishonored itself so many times that we can hardly count it. And as long as there are five permanent members who have veto status, the UN is no UN. The General Assembly is the only, uh, f the only part of the UN that has any kind of representation of the, the real opinion of people around the world. We need to have a United Nations absent of veto powers that represents the entire world where one nation counts for one vote and the United States no longer has a stranglehold on everything. Otherwise, it's a joke. And all of us who have our eyes open know this. The UN must be either radically transformed or abolished. It has no purpose in its current form. Of course, uh, uh, I'll call your attention to what uh, Israeli Foreign Minister Zipa Livni said on Monday. She said that we're not trying to punish the Gazan population. Uh, we're trying to take all the necessary steps to avoid civilian casualties. But unfortunately, as she said, uh, they, the Hamas, are hiding among civilians. I don't think uh, any government, including Hamas, would, uh, would want to uh, put the lives of its citizens at risk. So uh, what's happening here? You know, you know what? I, I, I think that there's honest terrorists and dishonest terrorists. Honest terrorists, the ones who uh, say they're responsible for so-called suicide bombs or other uh, attacks on civilian targets, at least are honest about it. They say, we're going to kill you because you are stealing our land, you are doing this, that, or the other. Whereas dishonest terrorists, which I would put America number one, the most dishonest terrorist of all, the one that is the largest purveyor of state-sponsored terrorism, hands down, million-plus dead Iraqis and counting, Afghanis dying by the day. These are dishonest terrorists, and Israel is its junior partner in this program of dishonest terrorism because Zippy Livni, the same woman who says there is no humanitarian crisis in Gaza, tells me they're not targeting civilians. Am I, in all truth, supposed to believe this kind of nonsense? It's clear that these people have no honor, no integrity, no humanity whatsoever. So when they say that they're not targeting civilians, when the predictable consequences of their actions is dead civilians, traumatized children, and an amount of suffering that Israelis wouldn't tolerate for two seconds, it means nothing. And those of us, again, who have our eyes open and have open hearts realize this.